Pat yourself on the back because you are right here, right now, for a reason. Welcome to the On Purpose Podcast, where together we will empower ourselves and others to live lives with more passion and purpose. How are you doing this morning, Jared? I'm fantastic, Mr. Ali. How are you, my friend? I'm doing fantastic as well, enjoying this coffee and ready to talk about the importance of discipline. Mm, that's discipline is near and dear to my heart and definitely one of the reasons I've been as successful as I've been and kind of on the path I'm on is because I've always been fairly disciplined. So I'm excited to jump into that and, and kind of share that story with our listeners. Amen. But Amen. First, I think we need to look back on the purposeful practice from last week's episode of what is culture? So what how do you feel you've done over the week taking inventory of your personal culture? Because that was a big theme we talked about on the last episode was personal culture and taking responsibility for it and looking how we can change it and identify it. So what kind of uh, experiences did you have doing that? I had some really great ones. You know, I actually took a look at some of my practice from the authentic self episode because, you know, during our weeks, we have emotions that are up and down. So you have to look at like what's really true to your your core, your authentic self, your personal culture. And I realized for me, discipline is a big part of it. Vulnerability, being real, how I'm feeling in the moment is a big part of it. Uh, goofiness. You know, I, I love interacting, laughing every day, being goofy, being silly and impacting culture by by bringing value and being my authentic self in culture, bringing positive, creating change. A lot of like what you said with that grat, mm -hmm. exercising daily gratitude, continuing to push to, uh, push forward with my goals. Big one this year is getting this MMA fight done, the training. Um, so discipline, goofiness, bringing positive energy and, and the things that I've said in previous podcasts that we want to see more in the world, connection, interpersonal communication, love, kindness. I believe that that's all encompassing of my personal culture. Yeah, that's awesome. You? And for me, I got to go with my wife to support her business it's to the doTERRA convention out in Salt Lake City and just immerse in other people's cultures. And I think that's mm -hmm. awesome at times is – I have, I'm fairly defined in my personal culture. I feel pretty solid on it. So how do I grow? How do I know I'm not being stagnant? Well, for me to get to go to a convention like that with 20,000 people that have similar ideals, similar wellness goals, similar passions on essential oil use and natural therapeutic benefits, being in that mindset and kind of coming in for a minute, forgetting your personal culture and just wanting to feel theirs allows yours to grow. So I think that for me is always telling it's one of my favorite weeks of the year, just going out there and just being like a sponge and absorbing everything that's around me and feeding off other people's energies and seeing how I can kind of bring that into my personal culture and identifying the strengths of my culture and areas where I'm weak and, and things that I need to uh, improve upon. So that's a big thing for me is just immersing myself in others' cultures. And I think that's something we could all do a little more of it, because if I immerse in your culture, like I come to, you know, like that one time you brought us all the food that your mom made. Mm. Well, that's part of your culture. Mm -hmm. I had never experienced it, but by immersing myself, being able to taste, I realized, wait a second, I like this part of your culture. Maybe I should eat more food like this. Mm -hmm. But sometimes with our culture comes our boundaries. So for me, going to the convention and just being out in other people's cultures and learning and feeling it and watching them improves my personal culture. Yeah, yeah. It's funny, right, how we set those boundaries. We can be embarrassed. I remember as a, as a young boy, sometimes I'd be embarrassed if I had some of my dad's side of the family come to my school with, with like the hijab on or stuff like that. I, I, I was embarrassed of my own culture uh, for a little bit. So that was definitely some good practice. Listeners, if you haven't checked out checked out that episode and gotten the purposeful practice in for what uh, the val or what is culture, make sure to get that in. But today we are talking about a piece of both of our cultures and that is discipline. So as you guys know, we always start with having awareness. So let's start with how do you define yeah. discipline, Jared? For me, it's a saying that I've heard a while ago and I would love to give credit to whoever said it, but I don't remember is that discipline is doing what you said you were going to do 
long after you feel like doing it has left you, right? So doing what I said I was going to do when I no longer feel like doing it, that's discipline. Best example I have is getting up every day, right? I, there's so many, so many time hacks out there now and so many people that are like, get up, make more of your day. And you'll see people that will get up at 5 o'clock for a day or two. And then they're hitting snooze and they're back to bed at 7, 7.30 because they don't feel like it. Well, discipline is doing it over and over when you don't feel like doing something. That's my thoughts. What, how do you define discipline? Very similar. My definition of discipline is deciding what it is that – you need to do and doing it consistently. So for me, a big piece of my discipline is having uh, an accountability tracker. I have a spreadsheet and I think I've spoken on this before and it's called our, uh, our mastermind accountability chart and group. I get on a weekly call every Monday with three accountability partners. We have four categories of, of of disciplines, spirituality, relationships, finance and career, and health and fitness. Within each category, I select tasks or actions and the amount of times I need to do it. So for example, train MMA, right? Three times, I got to get it in at least three times this week. Check, check, check. Spirituality, meditate. I want to meditate at least five days a week. Check, check, check. So to me, Discipline is deciding what you need to do, how often, and making sure you're doing it. Is that, that's my, my definition. No, I like that. And, and you use an actual tr spreadsheet mm -hmm. to hold yourself accountable. Yep. Google, yeah, that's very yeah, good. Google Sheets, it's shared. And then we get on a call every Monday and ask each other, hey, actually everyone presents. This is what I got done, blah, blah. And then we have a small portion asking questions. Why didn't you get this done? How can you improve next week? Do you feel that you were disciplined and et cetera? So another part of your discipline is being in an accountability group to hold your, hold you accountable to making sure you're doing what you said you were going to do. Yep. Yeah. And that's, that's important. I think that's a, a great thing for many people out there is sometimes it's easy to be undisciplined if you're the only one that knows you're supposed to be doing something. Oh yeah. I mean, you're going to let yourself down before you're going to let someone else down. Yeah. That's just, that's just how we're wired as human beings. Which is why this purposeful practice is important. It gives you a chance to have us as your accountability partners, us that know where your goals are and what you said you were going to do so that we can follow up with you. So make sure you're getting that in. Make sure you take full advantage of the podcast and everything this community has to offer by really committing to the practice so that you are seeing results of the topics and of the, the lessons and the stories we're sharing, you're starting to see success in your life as well. Yeah. Yeah, it's a huge way to utilize discipline is, is including others. I have a, a brief story. Of, I've always been pretty fit and, and did good with working out and, and eating right. However, I took my discipline to the next level about four years ago. I decided to compete in a, in a men's physique contest. So you get on the board shorts and you know go pose on stage and everything. And I, I even though I knew there's plenty of YouTube videos that all of the information that we need is out there for whatever practice you want to do. However, I decided to invest in getting a trainer. And I went back and forth about it. But it was the best decision I ever made because I had that extra layer of discipline and accountability. I had to meet with, even though I only saw him once a week, he would take my weight, ask me how, how my diet was going. I'd work out with him so he saw if my strength was going up, saw if my weight was going up. He was checking in with me and helping me hold accountable, which increased my level of discipline. Which Don't get me wrong, I have a lot of self-discipline. I know I still could have done the show without the trainer, but having that accountability partner, another person, I believe for anybody is going to help you be even more disciplined with whatever you're trying to attain. Yeah. Uh, discipline, it's interesting. Discipline has such a negative connotation to many people, right? They hear discipline and they think being in trouble. They think being restricted. They think of not being able to do certain things. And I would really encourage you to think of discipline and Jocko says this best on his podcast is discipline is freedom. 
the more disciplined I make myself, the more freedom I truly have. And for me, one of the best ways I utilize discipline in my day is my morning routine. Right, I, I get up every morning, I like 4.30, that's just a good time that works for me. I like getting up when it's dark out. I like having quiet time before the rest of the world seems to get going. I can meditate, I can do a breathing exercise, I can journal. But there's many days I feel like sleeping in, that I don't want to be up at that time, but I know that my best days happen when I get up at that time, when I do those things and it sets me up for success for the day. And I started doing that because there was many days I was going to work and I didn't feel my best. I was negative. I was down. My energy was low. I would go into the office and get hit with problems right away. And, and I, I just didn't like how I felt. So I, I, I took ownership of, okay, I'm feeling this way and I don't like it. How do I fix it? Well, when I get to work, solving problems is my job. When I get to work, it's not my boss's job to make sure I'm in a good mood. It's not my boss's job to make sure I feel happy. It's my job. Mm -hmm. So how do, I, how do I make that happen? Well, let me get up earlier and prioritize myself. Let me start doing meditation. Let me start journaling. Let me start breathing. Let me have time to myself to set the happiness for my day. Let me tell myself I'm going to be happy and create it. So, and then I started seeing results. I'd go to work and the problems that were being thrown on my desk – didn't bother me as much. I was, I was happy. I was able to solve them. So by being disciplined, I create results. Mm -hmm. and, and I think, yes, did it require less sleep? Yes. But the results were worth the trade-off of less sleep because when I was getting more sleep, I was less happy. So the discipline was a trade-off, produ produced the results I wanted. So discipline to me is not negative. It's very positive. It means that you are taking control of what you have by – prioritizing what you're going to get done. Yeah. I love that quote, discipline creates more freedom. And it's absolutely true. And we do have, a neg I have a negative connotation of, of discipline sometimes because of how we've been conditioned to believe in that word, right? Like discipline your children, discipline, like you're going to get disciplined, etc. However, we can think about discipline in a way that also creates joy as well, even if it is a part of your discipline. A great example for me is I realize I need to be disciplined enough to, to take a break and make sure that I'm putting in leisure during my week because sometimes I get undisciplined and I get too immersed in my day-to-day -day tasks. Yeah. And I, I, I'm just, oh, I can't go to practice, right? I got to miss Toastmasters this week. I got to miss things that I know bring me joy. And I, and I have a lack of discipline because I'm trying to stay too focused on work. That's not discipline. And it goes back to having that awareness and knowing what works best for you and your schedule and, and your best as a person. For example, Jared just said, he likes waking up at 4.30. Yeah. He knows that when he wakes up at 4.30, he performs better. He has better days. Does this, I'm sure there's probably something in your schedule to where maybe you know you need to step away from work and you need to take that walk. Or you need to, you need to maybe, maybe once a week, some of you need to, need to be disciplined in, in meeting your coworkers for happy hour or whatever it is. To where discipline doesn't mean that it needs to not be fun. Yeah, it doesn't mean it needs to be painful. Right. Right. Discipline just means you are doing what you're supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. Right. So for us, discipline means we show up and we record podcasts when we're supposed to record podcasts. We show up and we respond to the listeners when you send us your practice. We're disciplined on that so that now we empower others to be disciplined around us. And I think there's part of the confusion on discipline comes from to me, there's two types of discipline. There's external and there's internal. External is discipline that's opposed upon us, right? So being a police officer for all those years, I had to shave. It was, so I had to be disciplined and shave every night. Even though I hated shaving every night, it was a standard. It was a grooming standard. You couldn't have a beard, right? So, so that's external discipline. I have to shave every night to meet this standard. It's not my standard. It's their standards, but it's a condition of employment, Many of us are – some of the only discipline we'll have is external discipline, right? Only the discipline others put on us. As a kid, most of your discipline comes externally. 
your parents' expectations, school expectations, your team expectations, whatever you're involved in there, there's rules. That's creating your discipline because you don't have the experience yet to set the foundation for your own discipline. Yet if you think back to those, your peers at that age, your teenage years, those that really excelled and that you're like, man, this guy's really getting it. This young lady, she's just different. It wasn't that they had more time in their day. It wasn't that they were necessarily more gifted than you. A lot of times when you look back, they had just developed internal discipline along with the external discipline at a greater rate than many of their peers, right? The kid that got extra practice, the kid that went and lifted weights when everybody else went and partied, right? You, you, you had to equal external discipline. This person had just developed internal discipline at a greater rate than his peers, and, and I think as we get to be adults, it should shift, right? When you're younger, external discipline is forced upon you. Internal discipline is developing. When you get to adulthood, you leave high school, whatever, the external discipline is less, and now your internal discipline becomes more. Yet for many of us, we drop the ball in internal discipline, which leads to unhappy, unpurposeful relationships, lies. We're just not happy because... We haven't developed our internal discipline to meet what our goals are. Why do you think that happens are. to so many of us? Why do you think so many of us drop the ball on that internal discipline? I, I heard a quote recently that really made me think, and it said that the most basic lesson of, of human beings is to do what you're supposed to do when you are supposed to do it. However, it is one of the last lessons that we learn in life. You know, So I, so I don't think we're alone in you know, occasionally dropping the ball in the discipline. How do you think that happens? It's interesting. I think we're conditioned that way. I think, and this, this might be a stretch for some, but it's truly what I believe. The general society doesn't want you disciplined. The, 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 the big people in the world don't want you disciplined because if you're disciplined, you don't need all my products. Right? If you're disciplined, you don't consume. And, and something here, here's what I would think about. Number one, we should Google, like, what's the uh, best-selling book right now? Right? And I'll guarantee you it has less readers than the number one TV show. Oh, for sure. Right? Why is that? Because one requires, reading requires discipline. Let's see, best-selling books, 2019 on Amazon. We got The Girl Who Lived, a thrilling suspense novel. See, I don't know if Amazon's the best, what's New York Times <laughs> say? And we don't have to have the exact numbers, but here's my right. point. Is the best-selling books will have fewer readers than the most popular Netflix show, the most popular HBO show. And why is that? Because reading is discipline. Watching TV, not discipline. And, and, and it, it's weird to me, but if you look at the most successful people, they have the simplest habits. They're just very disciplined in using them. Warren Buffett. There's nothing fancy about him. He tells you that. He just reads more than he watches. He listens more than he talks. He's disciplined. Right? And think about this. If the more disciplined you are, the less you consume of everything else. If I'm disciplined in my fitness, I'm going on my runs. I'm watching what I eat. The less I'm consuming fast food, the less, I, less I'm consuming negative things in my life. I'm not sitting watching TV. I'm not being told all the stuff I don't want to hear. I'm disciplined in limiting the information that has to come, comes to me. And you've talked about this. You don't watch the news much. Nope. Hardly, like, not at all. Because you're disciplined on what you're allowing your mind to consume. Mm -hmm. So now how much money does Fox or CNN make off of you? Zero. Because Zero. you're not consuming them. So the thing I want, if, I, if my job is to make money off the masses I, and I need them to be undisciplined to consume what I'm sending them, TV is a very 
passive way to spend your time, sitting and just watching other people's entertainment, watching other people's lives for your entertainment. Mm-hmm. Well, if you're disciplined, you're like, nope, I'm only going to watch one TV show a day, and you used to watch four, you just cost me money. I just lost money because your discipline means you're not consuming as much. So essentially, let me get this straight. What you're saying is that large business owners, corporations, the media, most of our external influences are trying to make us less disciplined. Absolutely. I think it's, I think it's, and now some people, and if you disagree, you send us some messages. I'm down for a disagreement. And if you disagree, let me know. But I think that's the absolute truth. I want people to work their whole lives making somebody else's money. Right? And there's nothing wrong with working for other people if that's your thing. But then if, if, if your true goal is, say my, say your gift is you want to write kids' books, mm-hmm. right? Just for an example. And you're working all day to provide for your family and in the evening you spend two or three hours working on your kids' books every day because you're disciplined and your kids' books become successful – well, now maybe you don't have to work eight to five because you, you've, your discipline has led you another path in life. Whereas if that's your – the next, the opposite is if you're working eight to five and your true passion is kids' books and you have a message that could change the lives of little people, but you're undisciplined. You work eight to five and then you come home and you watch TV. You just sit. Well, the world never gets your message. Because you've consumed the whole time. But the people at play make money off you watching their shows all night. Yet your true gift goes unnoticed. You know, so I think it's for the majority of people being undisciplined is exactly what a lot of people want you to be. But you'll never to me, you're never gonna find successful people that don't have discipline. And yeah. it's discipline in the small things. So I'm gonna play some devil's advocate here and I'm interested to know what you think about the people who feel that they are doing what they're supposed to do or what they want to do, but it may not be, it, it may not be quote unquote productive, right? So let's, let, let's use the example you yeah, just said of, of the four, the person who watches four TV shows a day. They might argue that I need to be disciplined and make sure that I watch my four TV Sounds shows good. a day yep. because if I don't, then I'm in a bad mood. Sounds right? good. So here's what I'd say. If you're, if you're happy, if you're happy in life and you, you, you're happy doing whatever you do in the day and then watch a four shows at night, your discipline is working. You're happy. Be happy, man. That's all I want. I don't want everybody to have my path. I don't want everybody to have your path. Mm-hmm. But here's what I don't want. Don't work all day long. Watch four hours of shows every night. And then when I see you, you tell me how unhappy you are or how lucky I am that I get to do this certain thing in my life when the fact is I get to do this in my life. You get to do the way your life is because you're disciplined. Mm. So if you're happy, be happy, man. Do, do whatever you're doing that makes you happy. But if you're unhappy and you're still watching all these shows, you're unhappy and you're not in shape and you're unhappy because you're not fit yet you still eat out every night – and then you watch the shows, don't talk to me about being unhappy. Like mm-hmm. find the discipline to go for a walk, to watch one less show a night, to eat at home instead of eating out. And that's all I'm after, man. If you, I use discipline to make me happy. Mm-hmm. Why did I retire early from police work? I was not happy, period. I wanted to be more happy. So how do I get to be more happy? Okay, I retire. I move to a different stage of life. Now, discipline. I make less money. I have less benefits. I have more time. I have more freedom. I am happier because I've disciplined myself to live on less money. I've disciplined myself to live on less structure. But discipline is the key. Think about this. If I had left police work to pursue my business dreams to pursue this podcast, to pursue the gym, to pursue law enforcement training. If I'd have left it, but I'd have still worked on the same structure I had at police work when I was guaranteed to get paid no matter how hard I worked, 
no matter how much I produced because that you had a salary, if I had to take that structure to my house and worked at that same pace, I would not be successful because doing what I'm doing now requires a greater pace. It requires more energy, more input, consistency. I have to show up. If I take a day off, I don't make any money. I don't get paid. I don't create momentum for the next big event. So I have to be disciplined. But with that discipline comes my happiness. Right? I'm happier having to work harder. I'm happier owning that the results are directly related to how hard I work. Whereas before, I got paid the same yeah. all the time. Do you have any stories that you can remember to where when you specifically were exercising more discipline in a certain area and it really paid off and you knew like that, that brought you happiness? Like because I was very disciplined, now – I'm experiencing the increase in happiness in my life because of all the discipline yeah, that I've Yeah, for had. sure. I go back to 2014 when I did my first MMA fight. You know, I was 42 years old. A lot of people at that age in my life are pretty, like their glory days of athletics are behind them. Their fitness is a secondary Dude, even in, my, in mine, I'm 28 and I still hear so many of my friends being like, oh, like high school's over, man. Yeah, I like, do. Crazy. <laughs> So I did my first fight. I was 42 years old. I think the guy I fought was early 20s, maybe mid 20s. Um, I trained hard. I got leaner than I ever had. I cut, you know, I weighed in at 155. Dang. Which is, you know, 20 some pounds lighter. I cut weight. I was disciplined in my diet. I worked out many times a day. And the journey awoke something in me. I, I was able to share it with so many people that just shocked me that they were even interested. And so I was disciplined to do a fight. But that discipline now carried over because it set the framework for my business adventures. Being so disciplined there allowed me to realize, wait a second, this is my, my potential is greater than what I'm currently doing today if I add more discipline. It also made me realize, okay, if this is what I'm capable of here, if I take this discipline and multiply it, what am I capable of there? And, and I think that's the value of being disciplined is it's hard to compartmentalize discipline. You can't really say I'm going to be disciplined in this area of my life and be undisciplined over here. It doesn't usually work that way. When you start adding discipline, you start getting up earlier, you start being more productive, you start going to the gym once a week. You start going on a walk instead of watching TV shows. All of a sudden, it starts to parlay. And okay, now I've done that. Now, now I'm going to eliminate potato chips from my diet or I'm going to eliminate soda for, for the week. It carries over. Discipline creates momentum. So for me, doing that fight in 2014, the discipline that I thought I needed just for the physical aspect and the mental aspect of fighting really changed my life and put me on a total different course to where I started seeing other things that were possible if I stayed disciplined, if I stayed on track, if I started setting goals more, if I started waking up earlier, if I started doing the little things, now all of a sudden, here I sit, what is that, five years later, I have multiple businesses, I have speaking, we have this podcast, like we have so much more. And to me, it goes all the way back. If you look before that first fight, I wasn't doing hardly any of this because I would say I lost discipline in my life. I had kind of started accepting that maybe life was what it was and, and lost my drive to really create life versus just accepting it. Yeah. So how do you use your, your, you're a leader in most of the communities that you're involved in. I mean, from, from your very basic community to in the household, you know, you're a father, you're a husband, you're a leader in your home to where you're a leader to our on purpose community in the gym. You're a coach to many people 20-year police officer, leader still to this day in, in the police world here in Fort Collins and, and now with your career in the police world throughout the entire United States and, and even overseas. Yeah. So how do you use discipline to lead and to influence other people? How do you use discipline yeah, to do that? A, yeah, that, that's a great example. I mean, it comes down to this. I cannot expect you to do things I'm not going to do. Right? So we can't Talk to our listeners about the value of getting up early, the value of journaling, the value of meditating if we don't actually do it. 
discipline allows me to influence others because I'm doing exactly what I'm talking about. It shows them what's possible. Nobody, and here's the, and this is the one that drives me crazy, and I've talked to, to many people about this. Every now and then I'll get somebody that comes to me for advice on personal training. And maybe it's a female. And they're like, hey, I'm going to sign up with this coach, and, you know, I, he's going to help me get my fitness goals. And I'm like, okay, what does he look like? And they describe this big, buff, bodybuilding guy. I'm like, okay, what are your goals? Well, I want to look good in my swimsuit and be super lean. <clears throat> I'm like, I don't know, is that the right fit? Mm-hmm. Like, I would literally do, go to somebody that's done what you're doing. And for me, being disciplined, us being on this path allows others to follow because we're doing what we said we're going to do. We're creating a path. Now, they can come with us, and then they can start to vary off the discipline in their lives and lead other people with them. Too many people out there want to tell you what to do, tell you how to make a quick million dollars, how to get all these followers, yet they're not actually practicing what they talk about. Mm -hmm. And that, to me, is the... What the number one thing I look for, if I'm going to take advice from you, you better be doing what you're telling me to do. Mm-hmm. Well, people are looking at me that same way and they're looking at us that same way. We better be doing what we're telling them to do mm-hmm. or asking them to do. Yeah. And that comes from discipline. Discipline yeah. is influence. Right? Especially today with social media. You know, you look at Goggins. You know, I love Goggins. Yeah, he's awesome. And why do people resonate with him? Because he suffers with you. He goes out and suffers more than any of us suffer with his ultra marathons and the pull-ups and, and all that. So you look at him like, okay, his discipline allows me to start becoming more disciplined in my life. Because if he's doing this, okay, what can I do to become more disciplined? That's the same for us, right? We're asking our community, hey, be more disciplined in your life. Take inventory of this. Take inventory of that. Look at this. How am I showing up in my communities? What's my authentic self? All of that is creating discipline. How do you use discipline to to influence others? Being vulnerable, being vulnerable with my discipline and not only sharing one thing I, I'm noticing I'm I'm using these long ands, man. I'm catching them and it's and it's irritating me. I need to be, be a Joe little bit Elliot. more disciplined on, nah, the, on the long ends. Joe can edit that. <laughs> The, the vulnerability piece and not only sharing when I'm succeeding mm-hmm. and, and when I'm being disciplined. For example, De Goggins, uh, 75 hard, Andy Frisella. That was a challenge, a 75-day challenge that I did not complete twice. Did 22 days in a row and then didn't get the, the, the read my 10 pages of book, had to start over. Got 19 in, had to start over. And really sharing where my discipline falls short because I think that some of us get too caught up in having to be disciplined 100% of the time and not being real about discipline being something that you're continuously honing on and that you're continuously improving on. So I've, I've realized too that I am connecting with more people when I am also sharing a lack of discipline or, or a, a small sliver of w- when I wasn't disciplined. Yeah. And people people actually can humanize with that because like you're saying on social media, we're seeing Goggins 24-7, right? And, and a lot of us don't feel like we can even relate to Goggins at all to where, of course, I want to be pushing the discipline and doing all that out there. But I think it's also very important to show and be truthful about times or areas where, hey, I fell off the discipline and, and now I need to come back up. You know, a great example was a few weeks ago, I had my first tournament where I went 0-2 and, and it was against the same guy and I got submitted with the same move and that is very uncommon for me. And I, I was very frustrated, but I knew that it was a lack of discipline because I knew that was an area of my game, leg yeah. locks. I had just got caught with a, with a, a straight ankle lock before. And, and, and as a wrestler, I'm always top game. I never, I'm never trying to grab the feet. I'm never pulling guard. I'm never doing any of that to where I only went to practice one time that week. I knew it was something that I needed to work on. And my lack of discipline resulted in a result that I didn't want, yeah. a loss. You know, I, I wanted to go and win and win that tournament, and it was almost like 
It was almost like the universe threw me that lesson. I'm, I had never gone against a guy, and he literally told me, he's like, that's my own, that's all I got, man, joking, all I have is leg locks, like, that's all I do. And of course, that's what I got, and it was just a great example of, I knew what I needed to do, I knew what I had to be disciplined at, yeah. I chose not to be disciplined at because I, I didn't, I didn't enjoy it, I made excuses in my head, and I did not accomplish the, the result that I wanted it that I wanted, but obviously I didn't, I didn't want it bad enough because I didn't use the discipline. So I think that, like you said, I am the example. I do set the example. I do wake up early every morning. I do get my workouts in. I'm always eating healthy. But I think that a, a, an important piece also of influencing others is also sharing, hey, I'm not perfectly disciplined all the time, but I'm disciplined in realizing that and fixing the, the problem moving Which forward. is discipline. Right. right. Discipline doesn't mean you're perfect. It doesn't mean that you're not going to stumble or fail to show up when you should have shown up. It doesn't mean you're not going to sleep in. It means you're aware that it happened. You own it. Right. Discipline is ownership. If something doesn't go right, I own it. I need to fix it. There's something I can do about it. And then you make the change. You don't consistently repeat it. That's discipline. Discipline is not perfection. Discipline is not mistake-free. Discipline isn't missteps or misjudgments. It's just owning it and taking accountability and then not repeating it over and over. And that's where too many people, they stumble, right? They make a mistake and instead of being disciplined towards it and seeing it as an isolated incident and a behavior to change, they allow it to become who they were. Right? right, they they sit, look back and are like, "Oh, I made this mistake a long time ago, and this is who I am." Well, no, it's not who you are. It was a mistake. It was a moment in time. Right, I'm not a morning person. Yeah, well, you keep telling yourself that <laughs> you're never going to be a morning person. Guess right. what? Most people don't like getting up early, but the dudes you aspire to be, the ladies you aspire to be, the people you're following on social media that seem to be getting more out of their lives, probably get up earlier. Oh yeah, it's a small thing, and and that's. I would tell people if you're listening to us and you know you need more discipline in your life and you're struggling with that, start with something small, right? Start with maybe you normally get up at 7 and you're rushing out the door to get to work by 7.45 or 8. Try getting up at 6.45 for a week. See how that feels. Then it's 6.30 and then slowly like move it back to where you feel – control to set in your mind frame and your, your mindset for how you're going to go to work that day. It's small things. You know, if, you, if you're overweight and you're not happy, you're not happy with your fitness level, start being disciplined by doing one thing, going for an extra 10 minute walk a day, eliminating soda, eliminate whatever it is, start small and then discipline will create momentum for you to be more disciplined in other areas of your life. Yep. Yep. You can build up with that. I wanted to ask you something before we get to the practice. Yeah. And I think it would be good for our listeners and even me too, but for you to share a story because you're such a high achiever and a leader to so many, I don't see, we don't see a lot of times where you have fallen short of, of staying disciplined. What's a recent time where you had a lack of discipline and how did you overcome that? Yeah, that's interesting. Um, it's interesting. So we always generally see others as being more successful than ourselves. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? We look at others like, oh, they're so much more successful. What we don't see is those behind the scenes struggles. Um, time, there's been so many times I'm not disciplined. So many times I haven't done what I said I was going to do. Uh, I try to minimize those, but I think we all have them. I could tell you my sophomore year in college, I was not as disciplined as I should have been. You know, I had my dream was to always be a professional baseball player. After my freshman and sophomore years, I kind of realized that probably wasn't going to happen. Yet I still had teammates. Um, I still had a leadership position on the team, and I, I quit showing up. I quit doing the things I knew I was supposed to be doing because I had kind of moved past. I, no long, I realized that goal was no longer attainable and I moved on, but I, I wasn't disciplined enough to have honest conversations with people. Mm -hmm. I wasn't disciplined enough to continue to show up for people who are counting on me. And, and I just quit. You know what I mean? I, I just walked away from it. And that's a time when I look back and I'm like, man, that was probably the saddest point. One of the sadder points of my life because I 
completely went against everything I had always done up to that point. Yeah. And you would have been more happy. You would have been happier if you had just been disciplined, even with that, you know, owning that negative yeah. belief or that, that negative, uh, well, because it was, it was positive. Right. Mm-hmm. And I guess here's what I would say for people is me realizing my dream was no longer possible. That I just wasn't good enough to be a major league baseball player. If I'm disciplined and I'm continuing to develop the habits and I'm showing up to practice and I'm working hard and I'm conditioning like I'm supposed to and I'm still giving to my teammates and I'm still being coachable, what other doors would have opened? What other paths would have shown up? Maybe, maybe I wasn't supposed to be a major league baseball player. Maybe I was supposed to be a coach. Yeah. Maybe I was supposed to, right? But because I quit showing up. Right. I mean, Best I quit path. showing up. I shut the doors on everything that was possible. And you never know, right? Yep. Just because something doesn't become what you thought it was going to be doesn't mean it's not going to create a pathway to a new place. But the only way you'll know that is through consistent, that show up piece, that being there, the living up to what you said you were going to do. Many points in my life where I was afraid that I was not going to be any more than, uh, quite honestly, a policeman for the rest of my life. And that, that, you know, I remember talking to people and they're being like, what, do you, what else do you want to do? I'm like, I don't know. I think this is all I'm supposed to be, just a blue collar worker. I just show up. I work hard every day and I go home and that's what my life is. And internally, I knew I was supposed to do more than that. I knew I was supposed to be something bigger. I knew I had, I had a calling. I had a drive. I had potential to do more. Yet it required work. Mm-hmm. It was so much easier to watch television. I remember back to when Andrea and I first were dating, man. We used to, like, we knew what day of the week it was by what TV show was coming on because this was back before DVRs and stuff. So, like, you had to watch it the night it came out or you're going to miss it for a week. Yeah. And it wasn't my true potential, right? It wasn't who I was supposed to be. And it was only, quite honestly, through that fight in 2014 and some other things that started to pop up in my life that by adding more discipline to my day, more discipline to my daily activities, I really started to realize, wait a second. Yep, I did have different dreams. I did have different goals. I should probably pursue these so I don't have to live with regret forever. Yeah. No, I think that's great. And I want to let our listeners know, too, that a big part of discipline is knowing who you want to be and and what you want to do, right? Not everybody has to be a very high achiever who, who hardly watches any TV and who journals yeah. and who runs a podcast and who has, who had a career and owns multiple businesses. That doesn't necessarily mean that you can't be disciplined and also watch TV and maybe not do many extracurricular things. But a big part of being disciplined is knowing what it is you want to do and then doing that. It doesn't necessarily mean you have to have all these high achievements because someone like Jared achieves a lot and a lot of people may not want to have that much discipline in your life, but it's going to take discipline to know that, to know what it is that you do want and having the discipline to execute on the tasks you're going to need to get there. So I just just want to add that because you you know, frankly, you you do do a lot. And for some people, there are going to be police officers to where they are going to want that, that discipline and not have another career and have, have discipline around just a few things. So I would say that I I encourage people, but I know what makes me happy. And that's why my discipline works for me. I am happy being around a lot of people. I am happy taking risk. I am happy I am happier knowing that my financial results are the direct correlation to how hard I work, how much I put in, the connections I make, the people I can help. I was unhappy knowing that I had a salary that was just set for me. No matter how good or bad I was, this was my salary. I didn't like that. doesn't mean that's for everybody. Mm -hmm. But be disciplined in knowing what makes you happy, what makes you feel fulfilled. Whatever that is, and then be disciplined to do it. Yeah. And if, if that means you want to work, you know, your normal job and spend all week fish all weekend fishing, and that makes you happy, do it. Right. I'm not judging anybody else for their happiness or lack of happiness, but I am going to call people out. If you have no discipline, 
you're unhappy and your habits are making you more unhappy, that is a problem. Yeah. And that is something that you can control. And I think hopefully that's the message people get out of this is discipline allows you to control your happiness. Yep. Period. Yep. And it's important to also know that you have the discipline to have the discipline to know that you can create any life that you want as long as you're living on purpose and that there's nothing that's unattainable. I mean, there's a trillion different outcomes. Well, what's that quote you always say about your, your worst nightmares meeting your... Oh, yeah. Your, so, yeah, I got... What was that? The quote is... Uh, yeah, my worst nightmare is, is dying and going to heaven or wherever you believe you go and meeting the person you could have become and you don't even recognize them. Right, right. So it's important to know if, if, you're, if you have that fear too and there's this person that you could have become and you're not having the discipline to get there, then that's when you're doing yourself you gotta a disservice. You got to make changes. You got to make changes. Yep. You got to make changes. So just realize that the discipline – with more discipline can give you more happiness and more freedom. But a big piece of the discipline is really defining who it is that you want to be, right. what it is that you want to do. And go do. back and listen to the episode about your authentic self. Like I am very disciplined because I know exactly who I want to be. Not what I want to be, not what I want to earn, not what I want to achieve, but who I want to be. So that I'm disciplined to make sure my, my daily habits lead me to who I want to be. And I think, you know, off camera, you and I were talking about the changes in life and places where we're going to be in the future. It evolves. But being able to get where we want to be requires the discipline of knowing. It's evolving. And, and okay, I'm, I'm changing. I have different feelings towards this. What does this mean for me? What do my habits need to do differently? What do I need to, to explore? It's all discipline. Yep. You know, and... Nobody is blessed with this magical great life, this magical carpet ride of success or failure. It's all about how hard we work, knowing where we want to get, how we're going to get there, and then being disciplined to stay on that path. Amen. Amen. I agree. Speaking of discipline, let's talk about purposeful practice for the week, and let's have the discipline to get it in. The first piece of the practice is identify in what ways could you become more disciplined list those down part two is identify what the results of being more disciplined could be you're probably going to find that you're going to have a happier and more free life because of your discipline and then number three identify two ways that you are going to commit to becoming more disciplined and most importantly, have the discipline to email us your findings at onpurpose.official at gmail.com. And don't forget, team, our first On Purpose workshop is coming up. It's getting close. We're only a couple weeks away, October 19th here in Fort Collins, Colorado. Register on the Eventbrite link in our bio on Instagram. It's on our Facebook page. Uh, registrations are coming in, so space is getting limited. We only were taking 20 students and uh, community members for this event. So get in there. It's going to be worth your time. We're going to create a blueprint with you on how to help you achieve your most purposeful life. So have the discipline to sign up, commit some time on a Saturday. It's four hours. I guarantee it'll be well worth your investment of time and money. And we look forward to serving you in many more ways and in helping you find your most purposeful self. Yep. Guaranteed value, 100%. So as always, thank you for being here. Please, please share, like, review the podcast if you're getting value from it. If there's something you want more of, send us an email, send us a DM on any of the you know, Instagram or Facebook, wherever you're reaching out to us, comments on YouTube. As always, we are here to serve and bring you value, and we can't tell you how humbled and honored we are that you spend time with us every week. Remember, team, life is far too short to live any other way than on purpose. We'll see everybody next week.